Okay, so Pi News episode 68, and for this episode, as pretty much usual, I'm using my Pi 4 8 gig, uh, but I've got a little addition here. See this little adapter? It's a USB-C to USB-C cable, and it tells you how much power you're using. And uh, I really like it. I've got a USB-A to C one as well. Link's in the description, but anyway, let's get on with the news. Okay, so first up from hackster.io, this DIY 3D printed solar capable six display Raspberry Pi Cyberdeck is an off-grid multitasker. It does look incredible. So designed for those who find a single screen limiting, this off-grid gadget can split into three independent dual display portables. I can see some solar panels here. I was trying to create a Cyberdeck that is USB power but provides a maximum number of screen, hence six. The use case I had in mind is a blackout situation when only USB solar power banks are available but you need to perform productive work. And there's a video here which looks like it goes through some of the process. And here we have it out in the field which is cool. I'll put a link in the description to the video but this is amazing. Cool design being sold through Etsy. Modular 3D printed framework which folds for portability. Driving the six displays are three Raspberry Pi 4 Model Bs. You can see there's a power bank powering it there as well. So the full six display variant will set you back $468.12 and you'll need to supply all electronic components yourself. But I do like it, great project. Next up, um, if you missed it, we had a big Raspberry Pi OS update, uh, which is this one here. And uh, I also updated my KDE to be the latest version and made that downloadable. But if we have a look at the pinned comment on this Raspberry Pi OS update, so from Pretty Periwinkle, thanks for the announcement. I updated mine and love the searchable menu. For those having problems with it, go to the panel settings, menu, applets, and delete menu, and add menu with search. That will fix it. Uh, and there's a link to the story from the Raspberry Pi news article, and it has a thread on there, and there's loads of other suggestions in there if you're interested. But it's working great for me in this build. Next up, uh, and it was mentioned in that previous story, the Pi Camera 2 beta release. One of the new features of the latest set of Raspberry Pi OS images is for the first time pre-installed beta release versions of the new Pi Camera 2 Python camera library. So it's a replacement for the old Pi Camera Python library and some of the features here are listed below. Preview windows that use OpenGL acceleration for hardware assisted rendering. Additional support for embedding ready-made Pi Camera 2 widgets. And all the details are in the story if you're interested in any sort of Pi Camera project and there's details on how to install. Still on the subject of cameras, RG Cam contacted me recently. They did actually offer me one of these, but it, it isn't the sort of thing I'm into, uh, although it looks incredibly impressive, so I said I'd mention it in Pi News. So they have a time of flight camera for the Raspberry Pi, so this captures images in 3D. Depth sensing for the masses. You're not just getting another camera module, you are getting an entire solution exclusively built and optimized for Raspberry Pi. So this is how time of flight works. A time of flight camera emits modulated lights and uses the time it takes for the said lights to be reflected back to measure the distance, stroke depth info of any given object stroke scene, and you can obtain depth data. Well, there is a video here, so let's have a look at some of the video. Oh, and it's got Michael Jackson's music in it, so I can't play it. Um, but I'll play, I'll play a bit of the video so you can see how it's working out where everything is and giving it a different color. And there's all details of uh, hooking it up and everything. Looks like it needs separate power. So great for sensing how close things are to the camera. And obviously people are going to build that into applications they're going to use. Ah, so for factories though, so they can see a quantity of products in a particular location or if things are doing what they're meant to be doing. And there's loads of demos on here. You can see these cameras are detecting how many people go through a doorway. But I'll put a link in the description if you're interested in anything on this. There are more demos here as well. Um, but uh, yeah, always nice to see something new for the Pi. So next up, some Facebook stories. Uh, so we've got here, availability of the Pi has become a problem again. So we are back at looking at the Pi 400s as they're in stock. As we use these in a server room, it is silly that it is just a keyboard. As such, we set out to design and print a nice enclosure and rack mount. Pictures are still prototypes. So uh, obviously the Pi 400, when you take it out of its keyboard, it is a really lovely slim board uh, with all the connections in one area. Uh, and you can see here that they've made this server rack mount for it. Very impressive. And I'm hoping the aluminium is still kept in there because it is a really well cooled device, the Raspberry Pi 400. More 3D printing. After many iterations, I finally got a Pico case design I'm happy with. It's going to be modular, stackable design with all pins available in the smallest package I could create. The last pick is all the iterations. 
as you can see, yeah, lots of 3D printing trials and errors. So you can see access to all the pins here. We've got the uh, micro USB accessible as well. Yep, nice and neat. The US, more stock. This was on the 24th of August at Micro Center in Overland Park. We don't see much of that. And I saw this on the Supreme Retro Gaming. Have you ever had the low power lightning bolt on your Pi? To be honest, I haven't for ages. Um, and that's because I use the official Raspberry Pi adapter. Um, but uh, it does look interesting. So these were made for the Amazon Fire Stick. This issue is more known for the Pi 3. Oh, okay, so I've got a Pi 4. I have had it, but I've um, had it when I've been powering it by batteries and various different devices and kind of messing about with things. Uh, I used to get it with Windows in the early days because I had to power it differently. So it stores excess power from the USB port and then releases it when, well, it says here, when the Amazon Fire TV demands more power than the USB can source. So if you've bought one, let me know, but uh, I'm happy with the official Raspberry Pi adapter, but this does definitely look interesting. Yeah, love this one. Uh, what a cool little toy uh, and what a great use for a Pi. So you can see we've got the steering wheel, the gear stick, playing Ridge Racer 2. Love the FL meters here. You can see the steering wheel is controlling the car. Just love it, just looks really cool. And there are some pictures of the inside of this. Here we go, so loads going on. Uh, and here we've got a Pi, which is called by, it looks like one of the low profile ice timer coolers, uh, which is a nice use for that. But if we have a look at the next picture, it was super basic. So it was one of those ones that it had a screen that, that rolled down and you're moving this car left and right. So the car is static even when it's turned off. So uh, yeah, really nice use for that. Very impressive. Always nice to see a Pi in commercial applications. Came across this payment kiosk in Dubai. Looks like it's powered by a Raspberry. And I don't know this is a Pi. It's on the official RetroPi group, uh, but I don't think it says in the comments, but it looks brilliant. So the classic NES design in an arcade cabinet. We interrupt this news for a 3D print update. So this is my Pi 400 case that I'm printing out from a previous video. And uh, I've got four bits so far and it's working really nicely. But I've had to print out an iPad case because my iPad case was a bit broken. It does look very cool printing out this geometric pattern. Uh, but you can also get a, uh, a version here which has got your name on it or you can personalize it. Next up, Robot Builder shares Raspberry Pi Pecan high quality camera in 3D printed casing. So if we scroll down through, you can see there's some very cool looking cameras. We can see various different models here. Oh, we've got the RG Cam, look, the time of flight camera is in there. I didn't notice that before. A new build from robotics enthusiast Kevin McAleer involves a very in-depth demonstration using the Raspberry Pi high quality camera housed in a 3D printed chassis connected to a battery pack with an attached touchscreen. So the idea it looks like is to mount on whichever one you need to use for a particular job. A bit like an SLR or a mirrorless. Both lenses allow for aperture and focus to be manually adjusted via the barrel. And there's a video link in here if you're interested in watching a photography video about Pies. And there's some nice images of it here. It does look cool, especially with the four USB sockets on the side of your camera and an Ethernet. Oh, and a battery as well, look. Much the same way as a lot of camera manufacturers do it, where they have the... The grip part is where the battery is because it makes it bulkier and uh, nicer to hold. Another pie in the wild from Reddit, Ohio lottery machines run on Raspberry Pi. And you can see the bootloader screen from the Pi with the QR code on there as well. This is a cool looking handheld on Tom's hardware. Raspberry Pi radio controller doubles as handheld gaming rig. It looks really nice with two analog sticks, uh, a digital pad and four buttons and also some shoulder buttons as well with this antenna on the top. Not only works as a radio controller, but also doubles as a portable gaming rig capable of running RetroPie. So the project stems from a need to control his head crab robot remotely. So it's a Raspberry Pi Zero for control. Don't know if it's a Zero 2W, but that will certainly be better for the gaming side of it. But you can run some retro games on a Zero. Outer Shell was designed from scratch and 3D printed just for the project. It does look really nice. Nice one here. My updated Game Boy Zero kit for a Raspberry Pi Zero stroke Zero 2. Now with four front buttons, safe shutdown, digital audio, and no Raspberry Pi soldering. Also added solder points for a future plug-in board for L1 and R1 and LED boards for buttons and D-pad. And uh, yeah, I really like the look of this. It's very, very nice. You can see the Pi Zero is in here. 
connected with the GPIO pins it looks like uh, and there's a ribbon cable there as well it's got a little speaker little analog jack some nice close-up photos and it looks really cool in the Game Boy case Zega Main Boy Plus and last up Raspberry Pi camera with sound live streaming to YouTube I thought I'd test it uh, and see if the live stream is working so mentions power over Ethernet which is where you can power a device with an Ethernet cable 100 foot cat 6e cable to the backyard so let's have a look and see if the live stream is up we've got a link here ah unavailable i'll put a link in the description so you can have a look for yourself uh, let me know if the feed is up uh, because it'd be really nice to see a pi live streaming anyway i hope all this helps thanks very much for watching please like and subscribe